Hello everyone, it's Matt from Lean Stacks, and welcome back to another unscripted technology instruction episode. This episode continues our series on development operations. Today I'll be showing you how to install a version of Oracle's Java SE onto an Amazon EC2 instance. Let's get started. As you can see, I'm logged into the uh, my AWS account, and I've gone to the EC2 service, and I'm looking at the EC2 instances which I have provisioned uh, within this region. For me, this is the U.S. West Oregon region. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, I walked through how to provision an EC2 instance and how to use the YUM package manager to both install and update packages in previous episodes in this development operations series. If you haven't had the opportunity to see those, please go to the LeanStacks YouTube channel and check them out. To begin, I'm going to open a terminal window on my local machine. I have previously downloaded the latest version of the uh, Java SE JDK archive file. This is the tar gun zip file for Linux 64-bit systems. I've previously downloaded this to my local machine. Um, there was no need to see that. Uh, you can go to Oracle's Java SE page and download the version of Java uh, which you would like to install on an EC2 instance and pick up here and, and resume with the, the next steps. So the, the very first step is to get this archive file onto our EC2 instance. To do that, we're going to use the SCP Linux command, which is the secure copy command. The secure copy command works uh, similar to uh, the standard copy command. Um, it simply copies the file uh, across the internet over a network connection. If you've watched the previous videos on uh, the LeanStacks YouTube channel, you know that uh, to connect to an EC2 instance, you use a key pair file or an SSH identity file. The SCP command requires the same uh, key pair file. So the command is structured somewhat like this. SCP dash i, which the dash i option allows us to provide a, an absolute or relative path to the key pair file. I'm in the directory where the key pair file is located, so I simply need to specify the file name. The second option or command line argument to the SCP command is the source file. Again, I, I have the JDK tar gun zip file in the same directory where I'm issuing this command, so I simply need to supply the name of the file. The third and final argument to the SCP command is the target location for this file. Now, this argument is going to take the format uh, very similar to an SSH command, so we'll provide the name of the server user uh, that we're going to use to connect to the server, which is EC2 user, at and then we will provide, I need to copy it from the AWS console, the either the public DNS name or the public IP address uh, of the EC2 instance uh, that is the target for this copy operation. So immediately following that public DNS name or the public IP address, uh, use a colon to separate the uh, server name or server IP address from the path on that server uh, that we where we want to place the file. In this case we just want to place the file in the EC2 users home directory. So to specify that path we'll use the tilde or the squiggly line symbol uh, located above the left hand tab key followed by a forward slash and a period or dot. Um, this indicates uh, th this is uh, kind of Linux file path notation, meaning copy it. The tilde means the home directory. Forward slash dot is shorthand notation for use the same file name uh, as the target file name. Uh, 
I have already taken the liberty of copying the file uh, up to the server, again, to save time in this uh, episode. But this illustrates the command that you would use to copy the file to your EC2 instance. So now that the file has been copied up to our EC2 instance, let's connect to that instance using SSH. Once again, I'm specifying my key pair file or my identity file, followed by my server username and that same public IP address or public DNS. I've connected to the server. As you can see, the operating system uh, provided me uh, with a little banner and my prompt has changed to show me that I am connected to the server. I'll clear my console. Um, let me minimize this so that the view is a bit more clear to you. And let me list the contents of the EC2 users home directory. As you can see, uh, the Java JDK um, archive file has been successfully copied uh, up to our server. For the next series of commands, um, we need to perform them as the root user. So to establish uh, that administrative session or to assume the root user's privileges, we use the sudo command. So you'll type sudo su space dash space root. So we are assuming the uh, root user pr privileges on the server. The first thing we need to do on the server is unpack the archive. Now there's a couple different locations where uh, I've seen uh, the Java runtime environment or Java development kit um, unpacked onto a Linux server. Um, in my experience there's, there's two locations that are the most practical or most correct. Um, that is either the user lib directory or the user local lib directory. So for our purposes today, I'm going to put it in the user spelled USR lib directory. And if I list the contents of this directory, um, you'll see that there are several versions of Java um, already unpacked here, um, as well as a version of Python. So clearly this is a location where um, programming languages and libraries um, have been installed previously. Um, as you can see, there's a subdirectory here called JVM. So let's change directory to that. I'm going to clear my console once again and list the contents of the user lib JVM directory. So as you can see, there is a single uh, open JDK 1.7.0 um, version of Java installed here. And if I type Java dash version at the command line, it shows me that this is the current default uh, version of Java um, that is uh, employed by the server at this time. So we're going to be um, adding our version of Java, which is a the latest Oracle 1.8, latest at the time that this episode was created. We're going to add that um, here and then add it um, to the alternatives area of the uh, this server um, and set it as the default. So the first thing we need to do is unpack our Java archive file here. So let's copy that file. Let me clear the console. Let's copy from the EC2 users home directory the Java archive file. So we have the archive file here now. Now we need to use the tar command uh, to unpack the, the contents of the archive file um, within this directory. So we use the tar program. The options are dash x f. Uh, x is to unpack it and the after the f command we will specify the name of the archive file. So 
I'll clear the console once again and list the contents of the directory. As you can see, uh, we now have this new directory named JDK 1.8.0 underscore 92. This is the unpacked contents of our archive file. I'm going to go ahead, since we don't need it any longer, I'm going to clean up and delete the archive file. For that, I'll use the remove command rm and then jdk8. So I'll remove the file. I'll say yes, I'm sure. And now we've cleaned that up. It's no longer necessary. We've unpacked the contents of the file. And it's really best uh, not to leave uh, spurious files around on the, on the file system. It just confuses um, other administrators who may come in and, and work on this server later. Um, it's simply not needed. So we'll go ahead and remove it. Now the other thing to note here is that the unpacked directory um, has a strange uh, ownership on for both the, the owner and the group. Let's go ahead and change those to be root for the owner and root for the group. And let's do it recursively for the entire directory structure so that we don't have any file permissions, conflicts, or problems later. It's chown r root as the owner colon root as the group and then the directory name. Now I'll clear my console and list the contents of the directory again and as you can see they are now root and root. Now that we've unpacked uh, the Java development kit and we've set the ownership on the directory structure to be root, the next thing we need to do is let the operating system know about this new version of the uh, of Java uh, which exists on the server. So with many Linux operating systems uh, the way that they uh, the way that you configure multiple versions of a program or if there are different programs that all serve the same purpose like a text editor for example you use a, a system called the alternative system to configure those that is what uh, the the java program uses uh, to configure um, all of the various alternatives of Java, in this case versions of Java, which are installed on the system. And it also allows you to configure, as an administrator, uh, it allows you to configure which version is the default. Um, as you saw before when we typed java-version at the command line, the OpenJDK 1.7.0 version of Java um, is reported back to us as the default version of Java which is currently uh, used by this server. Once we're done installing and configuring our Oracle Java 1.8.0, uh, the java-version command um, should tell us that that is now the default version of Java used on our server. So let's get started. So I'm going to show you the uh, options for the alternatives program, the alternative system. So just by typing alternatives and pressing enter, we get the small short help system. Uh, first, we're going to use the install command uh, to add our version of Java uh, to the list of alternatives for the Java program. Then we'll use the config command um, to set our version as the default among all of the different alternatives for the Java program. So first let's use the install command. So type alternatives dash dash install. The, there are four arguments supplied to the install command. The first is a symbolic link which we want to set up uh, where this version of the Java program will be uh, set up and executed. So we're going to place that symbolic link in the user bin directory. So user bin Java. Uh, the reason we want to put it in user bin is because all programs or symbolic links to programs um, located within the user bin directory are automatically added 
um, to any user's path uh, on this server. So this uh, user bin Java will be made available um, to any user on this system. The second argument is the name of the program which is Java. The third argument is uh, the full path to the Java program that we want uh, uh, to be invoked with this particular alternative. So we installed ours in user lib jvm jdk 1.8 um, and then it's bin Java is the full name of the uh, it's the full path uh, to where the Java program is located. The final option is the priority. Um, this is a, a number and in the list of alternatives for this program if there's more than one this represents where it appears in the list. Um, since we don't know how many uh, Java alternatives already exist in the system. We'll go ahead and put one in there. If there already is one, um, this will either take be inserted into position number one and the others are moved down, um, or this will be inserted at the end of the list if there's already a number one. And the alternatives program behaves slightly differently uh, depending upon what operating system you're on. So the, the alternative system in Debian base like Ubuntu server uh, may behave one way with regard to the priorities uh, and this one Amazon Linux being an enterprise Linux derivative behaves slightly differently. So to list um, and configure the uh, alternatives for a program, we use the config subcommand. So type alternatives dash dash config and our program name that we want to configure is Java. So as you can see, um, ours is actually listed as, as priority number two um, uh, within the list. So this version of the alternatives program, even though we specified number one, um, it, it, it took the approach of, well, I've already got a number one, so I'm going to put you in the next available number, which is two. Um, as you can see with the location of the plus sign, the OpenJDK uh, version of the Java runtime environment is currently selected as the default. We want to change that. Um, to our version of the Java runtime environment. So let's enter number two and press enter. Now if we go back and issue the exact same command alternatives dash dash config Java we can go back in and confirm see our plus sign moved uh, down to our version of Java. Um, we can confirm that now the default version of Java or the default alternative for the Java program is our Oracle JDK. So I'm just going to press enter so that I don't change the selection. And I'm going to type Java dash version once again. So we're going to expect this the version to be displayed to our console to be the new version that we installed and it is. The next step in installing Java is making sure that the Java underscore home environment variable references uh, the absolute path to our installation of that Oracle Java SE 1.8 uh, version of Java that we just installed on this system. So th there are a couple different ways um, to set up uh, environment variables on a Linux system and uh, those are separated into uh, setting an environment variable that's only kept in memory for the duration of a user session and then those that are set up and they're persistent. They persist between uh, shell sessions. We want to set this up to be persistent between shell sessions um, so that any user who connects to this or any program that runs in its own shell on this server uh, always has this version of the Java or this value for the Java underscore home variable. So to do that, we're going to change directory to the Etsy profile.d directory. And I'll list the contents of this directory. As you can see, there's a variety of shell scripts here. What happens is every time a 
program on this server or a user logs into this server creates a shell session, um, the environment is set up and configured and part of that process invokes these scripts. So all we simply need to do is create a new script to configure the Java for this server. So I'm going to use the editor that I prefer to use which is nano and create a new file in this directory called uh, java.sh. Within this file I'm going to use the export command to simply uh, set the value of the java underscore home environment variable. And before I do that actually I'm going to exit from this file Let's see if there is currently a value set and what it's set to so that after we create this file uh, we can make sure that, that our new setting for java underscore home is taking effect. So to do that I'll use the echo command followed by a dollar sign and java underscore home. The dollar prefix is how environment variables are referenced on the Linux system. So as you can see, there it is currently being set, but it's being set to that uh, location of the OpenJDK 1.7 version. Um, so let's go ahead and create our uh, java.sh file using the export command that I referenced before. Let's set the java underscore home. Now notice here, I don't set I don't use the dollar symbol to prefix my environment variable. Um, when you're setting an environment variable with the export command, you, you don't prefix it with a dollar sign, but when you need to use an environment variable in a script or on the command line, uh, as I did previously, you prefix it with a dollar sign, uh, l letting uh, the shell system know that, that you're wanting to reference an environment variable by that name. So our version of Java was installed in user lib jvm jdk 1.8.0 underscore 92 and that is our home directory. We don't want to go to the the bin directory. We're simply saying this is the base installation dire directory uh, where we installed the entire Java um, or unpack that archive of Java. I'll press Control X to exit. I'll say yes that I want to save the changes. And I'm going to list the contents of the directory once again. Here's our new Java file. As you can see, it, it, the ownership of the file and the permissions on the file match that of all the other files in this directory. So we know that uh, when a new shell is created, um, it'll be able to be properly invoked um, as that shell is established. So to test this, um, I need to exit my current shell and create a new one. So I'm going to exit my SSH session all the way back to my local machine. As you can see, the connection was closed. I'll clear my console and then I'll SSH back to the EC2 instance creating a new shell session. Now if I echo the Java home variable you'll see that the new value that we created uh, is what was returned back to us. So any programs that need to reference the Java home variable or expect it uh, to be present uh, on the system for example, Apache Tomcat um, or any other Java program uh, that utilizes this kind of standard environment variable, the value will be properly set and reference the version of Java that, that we want it to use. That concludes this episode. To watch more LeanStacks technology education videos, go to the LeanStacks YouTube channel. To find more information about LeanStacks tools, technologies, and publications, go to LeanStacks.com.